In this video, I'm going to demonstrate briefly how you can use a fake email account to sign students up for different uh, tools that you find online that require uh, email accounts. I'm looking at my EdTech wiki, and if I scroll down a little bit, I see along the side under specific tools, a uh, link for email. So if I click on that, it takes me to a page that has a variety of resources for setting up email accounts for your students. Now I'll point out that one account that I would recommend you looking at is called ePals and this is a free tool that allows you to set up an entire classroom of emails. In fact you could set up an entire school uh, of emails and you can uh, have different administrators uh, of those uh, addresses and those accounts so you can keep track of what your students are receiving and, and who they're sending to and you can restrict what uh, they're receiving and who they're sending to. So that's something you might want to check out if you want to set up a whole set of emails for your students. Uh, Gaggle is another tool but I find that they have uh, advertisements that are displayed and rather annoying uh, within the interface so it is a free tool that you can set up emails for your students but the ads get in the way. As uh, we come down a little bit further though you see that there are uh, several different uh, temporary or disposable email creation tools that I have here. All of these tools basically are designed to allow you to create an email that you just use temporarily and basically discard, throw away, and don't use again. The whole idea is that you could, if you want to sign up for something that you just want to test out, you could use one of these tools so that you don't use your real email and you avoid getting spam. So Mailinator is one I've used before. And the great thing about it, and similar to the other tools, many of the other tools, is that you don't need to register or sign up or anything to use Mailinator. Okay? So I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to switch over to Dippity. Uh, Dippity is a one of the many online timeline tools that are available. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up. I do have an account, but I'm going to show you what I would do to sign up a student. Now, if I was working with elementary students, I'd go ahead and sign up all their accounts for them. And I would use a very basic protocol that was easy for me to remember and easy for them to remember. So for instance, I'm going to go student2 because I've already signed up student1. So I'm going to use student2. and. I'll let you in on a little secret here. You don't need to do this, but uh, you can if you want. I use the same password as I use for username. And since I uh, was mostly working when I've done this before with young elementary students, second, third graders, they're not really into hacking into other people's accounts. So they don't try to log in uh, as someone else once they know that the username and password is the same thing. But you can always mix it up more if you wanted to. So now I need an email for this student. So I'm just going to say student2 and make that at Malinator and you can see it pops up because I've already typed this in in other situations student2 at Malinator.com I don't need to go to Malinator to check and see if that's available or anything else I just made that up and I'm going to stick with my student2 as a first name student2 as a last name just to keep it all set the other nice, nice thing about that is I'm not giving out names of my um, students I'm not even giving out their first names uh, to the Dippity site so for safety's sake I'm protecting them as well of course I have to check this to say I've agreed to the terms and create an account okay and Firefox is asking for me to remember it uh, that login and now as I look up here I'm signed in as student 2 I'm ready to go I can use this uh, dippity tool I can create timelines do whatever I need to do this particular tool dippity does not require me to go back and check my email to verify my account but what if it did well I go to Mailinator, and here it says check your inbox. So I would just type in student2, because that's the prefix I use for the, for the email. And I click on go, and it shows me I have no messages for student2. So I have an inbox. Okay, Mailinator provides me with an inbox. So if I did sign my students up for a tool that required me to verify through email, I could verify it. But I'm not able to send any uh, email from Mailinator. So even if my students did figure out that they had a Mailinator, this Mailinator email address, Mailinator, the site, does not allow them to send any email. Um, and they could go here and check their email, but again, the kids I'm working with, uh, younger elementary, they're really not going to be um, checking into that so much. So this is really good for students who don't have emails, and um, even up to into middle school, uh, to use as a way to get accounts set up for them.